Welcome to Unit 1, which is going to be our debate unit. Uh, what does this word debate mean? Some people connect debate to discussion or dialogue, but are those really the same thing? Let's take a look at an international relations class to see how students of politics share their ideas in order for us to begin to understand this idea of debate. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So in today's lesson on international relations we're going to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of the EU. I take it you've all done your reading? Yes. 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 Excellent. Okay well let's begin. Okay. okay. Uh, I think being a member of a European Union has uh, some advantages for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the biggest benefits uh, that are offered to the member countries uh, of the e EU is uh, that they are free to trade with other members at no yes, additional yes, that's taxation. True. Yes. Yes, yes, I agree with you. This helps to keep prices, food, and good down in these countries. Oh, yeah. I, yes, really. Uh, but I think there's disadvantages uh, being in European Union. I think EU memberships create more problems than uh, solutions, like what I give an example. Mm -hmm. uh, cultural identity is lost. It's difficult to communicate each other because but they... Come on, but, but it's not true. It's true, Lots I of think. people know English. But uh, some, maybe, not all citizens know English, and it's not a cultural identity. Yeah, it's not a cultural identity, but as I say, it's uh, lots of people know English and but they not can also all citizens communicate. know English. They some and it's not that basic. Like in Turkey, they can do this way or go there. But they I can. I say that uh, it's not that basic. It's some yeah. uh, problems. It's cultural, yes. But yes. And rich and countries and peoples uh, exploit some poor people and countries. Yes. And I think that uh, EU trying to copy USA. I'm not agree with you. But I. But yes. But I think that. Why you don't say anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Of course, talking about the European Union is always going to be a hot topic. But what we're interested in is how the students interacted. Uh, there were some people who were talking a lot. There were some people who, who were interrupting quite a few times. And there were others who just didn't say anything at all. These things are typical of a discussion. In that discussion, we heard two positions. But neither of those positions was trying to convince the other. Neither of those people we're trying to convince the other one of their of their ideas. Is that typical of a debate? Let's look at a presidential debate to see if they do the same thing in order to further our understanding of what debate really is. And I want to talk about uh, taxes. Uh, the fundamental difference between the two of you concerns the wealthy. Secretary Clinton, you're calling for a tax increase in the wealthiest Americans. I'd like you to further defend that. And Mr. Trump, you're calling for tax cuts for the wealthy. I'd like you to defend that. And this next two-minute answer goes to you, Mr. Trump. Well, I'm really calling for major jobs because the wealthy are going to create tremendous jobs. They're going to expand their companies. They're going to do a tremendous job. I'm getting rid of the carried interest provision. And if you really look, it's not a tax. It's really not a great thing for the wealthy. It's a great thing for the middle class. It's a great Thing for companies to expand these and lots of other things and it would be beautiful but we have no leadership and honestly that starts with secretary clinton all right you have two minutes on the same question to defend tax increases on the wealthiest american secretary clinton i, I have a feeling that by the end of this evening i'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened why not why not yeah why not <laughs> Jo you know, just 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 join uh, join the debate by uh, saying more crazy things. Now, let me say, it, this. there's nothing crazy is about not letting our companies case. bring their money it, back into okay, their this country. Is, this is uh, Secretary Clinton's two minutes, yes. please. Yeah, well, let's start the clock again, Lester. Um, slashing taxes on the wealthy hasn't worked, and a lot of really smart wealthy people know that, and they are saying, hey. 
We need to do more to make the contributions we should be making to rebuild the middle class. I don't think top-down works in America. I think building the middle class, investing in the middle class, making college debt-free so more young people can get their education, helping people refinance their tax their, their debt from college at a lower rate. Those are the kinds of things that will really boost the economy. Broad-based, inclusive growth is what we need in America, not more advantages for people at the very top. Wow, American politics are crazy. What we saw in that particular debate was that both candidates, both opponents are given a specific amount of time to present their arguments. They are asked questions and what they need to do is with part of their time, use it to uh, attack the opponent's ideas in order to make their ideas look better. So use of time is a very essential element of debate. So as we can see from the international relations discussion and the presidential debate are that those two things are very different. Why don't you take some time now and answer the questions below to see if you understand the difference between a discussion and a debate.